Well, hello everybody. <clears throat> I think it's time to start. Uh, so if you are ready, let's get started. Today, uh, I will talk about root planning with Drupal and the open layers, and uh, also about uh, uh, creating mobile apps with PhoneGap. This is a real world example. This is an ongoing project. So I want to share some lessons what we learned. <clears throat> uh, I'm Peter Fonia. I'm the CTO and the co-owner of the Brainsum.com digital agency. We are also a Drupal services provider. You can find us <clears throat> on the Drupal.org website too. Uh, we work from uh, Bratislava and Budapest, from Slovakia and Hungary. We got offices there. Uh, so, how we made this uh, special uh, root planner website and uh, mobile apps for an oil company? <clears throat> At the end, uh, uh, I hope there will be time for questions, but if you uh, got any questions in detail, you can send me an email. There's my email address. <clears throat> okay. What is this all about? As you can see on this uh, <clears throat> uh, screenshot, here's a, a root planner website. Uh, at the top, there is a station finder functionality. You can switch to track mode from car mode. You can add waypoints, and there is a planned route already uh, with uh, POIs, with fuel stations along the route and uh, a customized uh, pop-up that shows uh, a particular uh, fuel station, and there is an add to route button there. <clears throat> okay, but see it in action. Oh. Okay, let's uh, type in our starting point. Actually, this is our office in Budapest. Um, the destination will be this Congress Center in Prague. Okay, we got the planned route here. And uh, you can see the different icons of the different brands of this oil company along the route. Uh, I had to pick up my colleague Conrad too in our office in Bratislava. So let's add the waypoint. And uh, let's see the main feature, adding fuel stations. Of course, we got uh, route options different for car routing, different for truck routing. We got uh, textual routing directions there. And after this, we select a fuel station. And as you can see, there is the add to route button. And it works. There is a new waypoint in the planned route. Okay, so that's it. This is the most important feature of the site. Of course, there are many more uh, GPX export and loading saving routes and uh, so on. But what we will cover today, <clears throat> the special requirements of the client. There are some, there were some uh, really interesting requirements. <clears throat> uh, choosing the right tools <clears throat> uh, uh, and some details about the website, how we deal with uh, different routing engines. <clears throat> uh, I will show up some uh, special uh, features, some challenges uh, that we faced and we solved, like uh, the stations along the route, um, and uh, a little uh, overview about the developing of the mobile apps for iOS and Android, the technology we used for that, how is that connected to the website, 
and uh, what kind of offline features uh, we implemented for those mobile applications. Okay. Uh, the first requirement, of course, this uh, root planner website where you can add fuel stations as waypoints to the planned route. Okay, uh, so you saw this. <coughs> the mobile apps for Android and iOS uh, with offline mode. There was a strong uh, need uh, from the client for offline features because this uh, company uh, runs fuel stations in many countries in Central Europe, and when a driver passes the border and uh, loses its own uh, <coughs> provider, mobile cell phone provider, uh, the internet connection becomes really expensive. The data roaming is uh, is an expensive thing in Europe, so uh, the client wanted to as many offline features have, as we can do. For example, search for nearby places, uh, of course, fuel stations, or uh, load the route uh, planned on the website, and after that, see it in offline mode <coughs> with the mobile application. Uh, also, we had to create uh, eight language mutations for each country's uh, yes, and there was a question that are we able to do this in three months? <clears throat> but this is not the end of the requirement list because we had to create truck navigation too because uh, one important target group of this uh, company and its products are uh, truck drivers or uh, truck com companies. Uh, and truck driving, is, truck navigation is a whole different thing, especially with toll calculations. They wanted uh, toll calculations to be implemented too. Uh, toll calculations are absolutely different in each country, <coughs> and uh, not just the rates, but the whole thing, the whole algorithm of it. So it was a nice requirement. <coughs> uh, fuel consumption calculations. And as I said, offline mapping with the mobile apps, if it's possible. And the question remains the same. Are we able to do this in three months? <clears throat> OK. Uh, we started a background research. Our, uh, one of the strongest candidates for mapping and routing was Google and its Google Maps API and Google Directions API. Google has an enterprise version not a cheap thing, but it's working uh, for this too. The alternative is uh, OpenStreetMap and uh, service providers uh, built on top of the free data of OpenStreetMap, like MapQuest. MapQuest. <coughs> we found some interesting uh, alternatives too, like uh, this OpenStreetMap track routing, which was developed on the Heidelberg University for track routing features. Uh, this is OpenStreetMap Base 2. And the Routino engine, which is a, a fully open source uh, routing engine written in C. You can um, install it on your, run it on your server and interconnect with it with the CGI script. Uh, because of the strong need of offline mapping, we started to discuss with uh, a certain uh, navigation software developer companies too, but uh, their license conditions were just not fit this project. <coughs> so the Sajik, the IGO, and the uh, Mac Factor went out, and finally we found a vendor who just finished its uh, implementation of uh, a truck routing engine based on OpenStreetMap data, and <coughs> they had a toll cal calculation engine too. So this was the safe port. Um, and about the concept, uh, in this short uh, time frame, uh, we wanted something to work on every platform. We didn't want to uh, bother with uh, Objective C or Java on the applications and and uh, 
<clears throat> the only thing what works everywhere nowadays is JavaScript. So the heart of this uh, application uh, is uh, written in JavaScript, which works well on the desktop uh, with a great open layers library, which is also really greatly integrated to Drupal. The Drupal open layers module is uh, really great. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> on the Mobile app, uh, on the mobile phones, we uh, are using PhoneGap. This is not our first project where we used PhoneGap, and uh, it's already proved for us that it, it, it is working and it's doable, this project, in, with this. <clears throat> okay, as I said, the oil company, the client, uh, has got two main target groups, uh, car drivers and uh, truck drivers, so uh, we had to uh, implement or integrate two types of uh, routing engine because uh, the truck navigation is so uh, different and uh, Google doesn't provide uh, truck navigation features. And, and of course there were the requirement for that toll calculation too. Okay. <clears throat> Let's start with the classic approach. Uh, somebody already wrote this in a module. We just uh, will find it on Drupal.org. There will be a contrib module. We will extend it and customize it, and, and it, it will work. <coughs> uh, uh, but this is not that case. There is no uh, working routing uh, module for Drupal. It was a really big sur surprise for us. <coughs> There is one, the route planner module, but that's a simple <coughs> integration of the Google Maps uh, libraries to Drupal only on the client side. So it's not uh, designed to work with open layers where we can mix up uh, different map providers and uh, add uh, custom features easily. Uh, and, and it hasn't got uh, Backend features such as uh, saving the route or loading the route. So <clears throat> it was not uh, usable for us. Okay, so we had to face this. Uh, <clears throat> the true, we will have to write code. And, and there were some question, more questions about the special gear spatial features. That uh, should we use uh, PostGIS instead of uh, MySQL? Uh, we will need it. Uh, there is a uh, geospatial distribution of Drupal, the Kartaro. Uh, it built up the top of this, this uh, PostGIS database. We will need these uh, special tools or not? <coughs> we'll see you later. Okay. Choosing the right tools for car routing. Uh, this was the easier part because there are several quite good uh, routing engines uh, with APIs for uh, car routing. <coughs> Finally, we picked Google Maps because uh, it's gear coding, it's the, the smartest. Uh, you can just uh, mix up the ordering of the street name with the country name and everything, and it just works. You can even mix up languages, and it just works. So it's really a clever thing. Uh, the Google APIs are uh, really fast and stable, <coughs> and the API is uh, very well documented and widely used, so uh, we thought that everything will be on the Google. Okay. <coughs> Our second candidate was MapQuest. Uh, uh, it has bigger usage limits. Yeah, I have to mention this because maybe if you start a, a mapping uh, project, <coughs> so I, I recommend that uh, read carefully the Google license policies and uh, usage limits because the enterprise version is a really expensive thing. So if your needs uh, doesn't fit the free version that, Maybe not 
the Google Maps is uh, your uh, choice. But MapQuest has bigger usage limits, has much better license conditions, uh, because it's based on the free OpenStreetMap data. But at the end, its language support was just not enough for us. And it's very difficult to translate an API. <coughs> so we decided to use Google. OK, track routing. The main difference with track routing is <coughs> that trucks are not allowed to uh, go everywhere where cars <coughs> uh, can. And uh, it, it is a really rare thing. Uh, the, there are not so many <coughs> truck routing engines uh, on the uh, on the market, and especially with toll calculations for Central Europe, that is a has a really big uh, <coughs> big 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 challenge what we faced. But fortunately, at the end, we found this vendor who had everything and <coughs> and uh, had the its their API had to answer for questions like, how much will I pay for my 11 tons heavy 5x truck from Frankfurt to, I don't know, Croatia. So here you can see that we have to first uh, put in these base parameters, the vehicle type, the weight, uh, the number of axles, and the emission standard. And after that, uh, uh, there are some specific questions about some countries uh, and it even depends on the it is night or day and so it's very uh, complicated but it works <coughs> uh, we together uh, planned this uh, api because they did not have one uh, so we made the specs and they uh, developed the rest api for us so it's uh, now similar to Google to in interconnect with them. OK. Choosing the right tools for mobile. There are several questions because uh, the mobile application development is, is uh, not finished yet. It's uh, currently under heavy development. There were some big questions. Will open layers work on mobile phones? Will be the user experience uh, uh, OK or not? Or should we pick just Google Maps for the mobile applications? And uh, how about those uh, scary offline features <coughs> needed? Uh, can we store maps with a phone gap based HTML5 application? Uh, Google's license condition doesn't allow this. Uh, you cannot save a Google Map. So when it comes to Offline mapping, uh, you, the, the, the best choice is the free open street map data, and the, the service is built on that. There is a great uh, JavaScript library, the leaflet, uh, and um, there are some service providers like MapTize uh, with uh, working APIs to download the uh, map data. OK, finally, uh, we declared that we can do this OK. But we discussed with the client about some of uh, their requirements. And <coughs> we declared some part of the project as research and development. <coughs> uh, the main difference between research and development and any other kind of project is <coughs> uh, that it is that a research and development project can state that it is not possible to reach the goal <coughs> of the project in the predefined conditions, uh, I mean, in deadline or budget. So uh, these becomes, uh, became uh, nice to have features, but we uh, absolutely tried to solve them. And we will see it, uh, it, it with success. OK. Um, let's see a concrete example how the website works. This is the uh, station finder feature uh, where uh, Drupal 
and views and uh, <clears throat> the geofield uh, module showed us that their powers because uh, this functionality is built without writing custom code. These are uh, just uh, exposed filters in a view. There is a proximity search uh, filter and some other filters for uh, taxonomy terms uh, of the fuel stations. So uh, this is a great example that the open layers, the views, and the power of Drupal integration. Okay. Uh, with the <coughs> website uh, the routing engine integration, that was a different story. Uh, we had to build a new module. We call it uh, Open Layers Directions. And it's built on top of open layers and the geofield. Uh, I have a secret hint for you. It was hard to find the documentation of the uh, great open layers Drupal module. It's located in the open layers per docs in a PHP file. Uh, not not in a wiki. Not on. You can't find it with Google, but it there is there, and it's, it's, it's a great documentation. So uh, this uh, code snippet uh, shows how we declared uh, new custom uh, layers, uh, which then uh, appear, appears in, in the administration interface of the open layers. Uh, so if uh, you get this module enabled, you will get a checkbox on the map page that enable Google Directions. And uh, there are also new layer types, uh, Google Directions, hybrid, normal, physical, and satellite. <coughs> OK. Uh, another example with code. This is how we are dealing with the two types of uh, the APIs. As you see, this is JavaScript 2. Uh, if we are in uh, car mode, we are building a, a Google Directions API request here. And uh, there is a, the other uh, part of the uh, code where we are starting to build a request for uh, the SafePort API. So the, old, the control object, the, the business logic in, in, is in JavaScript. OK. Uh, so as I said, for track routing, we found a, a, a correct service provider. We were able to integrate uh, track navigation and toll calculations too. So this was a research and development success. and. Uh, and then also, as I said, uh, with the power of open layers, uh, our application logic remains the same, while we could easily switch between the two map uh, providers because the safe for the truck navigation uses OpenStreetMap. Google, of course, uses Google Maps. So this is how we solve this. OK. Now let's see an interesting uh, problem and a solution for it. This is uh, how uh, the stations along the route feature works. Um, I was a really little bit scared about this feature because I thought that uh, we will have to implement some kind of uh, geospatial database and complex queries and uh, that will be a performance killer to run a query for each uh, track point of a route. But uh, fortunately, at the end, we found this uh, uh, library. This is a Google Maps utility library. And uh, there is uh, this uh, great approach. This algorithm uh, simply uh, provides you boxes, uh, bounding boxes or rectangular boxes. and any point within uh, within the specified distance of the route is guaranteed to be guaranteed to be in one of these boxes and also the number of the 
boxes is uh, minimized. So in this example, you got <coughs> nine boxes at the end, and with those nine rectangles, <coughs> you can just build a simple SQL query with indexable uh, where conditions and run it really quickly. So this in performance, this is a really good approach and simple approach. And we, <coughs> uh, that there is no need for a special uh, database. This is simply runs on MySQL or MariaDB2. <coughs> so this was the along the feature, uh, along the root feature. And another interesting uh, uh, point was the rendering of the polyline was what Google returns. Because we are using open layers, <coughs> which wraps uh, the Google Maps APIs, we had to create an open layers object for drawing the polyline of the route. This is okay, but every example of the on the web <coughs> says that you have to use this overview path or overview polyline <coughs> in the re response object of the Google Directions API. But there are just not there is just not enough information that this is very very rude as you can see on this uh, screenshot. If you just uh, draw lines between those points, the the lines are not following the route, the road. <coughs> so, so this, this was a little bit made us a little headache. But after that, <coughs> we found that. There is the uh, data for the, for a high resolution polyline in that response object, but it's just a little bit high. It then split to pieces, and and <coughs> you have to uh, push it together. There is there it is in the legs, steps, in the path attribute of this, and <coughs> it contains uh, 40 times on average, 40 times more points than the overview polyline. So it, it's absolutely perfect after that. So this is the patch what we used, <coughs> that we wrote at the end and we solved this problem. Okay. Uh, another thing that I have to mention that we had to create a Facebook integration of this uh, website too. This is not a really hard thing, you can just uh, <coughs> make it with a different theme, uh, with proper width, and uh, and you have to enable HTTPS uh, for for the website to uh, correctly integrate it to a Facebook page. <coughs> so, okay. <coughs> So I, <coughs> this is a summary of the modules that we used, the most important modules that we used and created uh, during this project, uh, topic by topic. Um, for mapping, we used open layers and uh, geofield. We brought new open layers directions uh, module on top of this. For the multi-language, we used the uh, Entity translation, what is the way that Drupal 8 works too. Uh, we had to write a small uh, model, uh, custom, a custom model for, for the import uh, database uh, for the taxonomies. Uh, by dealing with the data import, we used feeds. First, we got a custom Oracle SQL dump, we needed to import it to uh, convert it and import it to uh, MySQL, write uh, SQL queries select uh, for producing uh, a denormalized big CSV, and, and that uh, CSV was imported with feeds. We had to write a small uh, custom model for converting the GPS coordinates, but the fit uh, uh, did the work. <coughs> okay. At the team layer, we used a very nice uh, 
uh, JavaScript templating library. It's handlebars. Uh, uh, we already used it. It's, uh, it's a very nice way to separate uh, HTML from JavaScript when you write uh, many, many uh, JavaScript code. Uh, it's also supported by the uh, Drupal 8 uh, and, and uh, it, it works together with uh, Backbone GS. So it's uh, really a modern approach and a very clean uh, approach to separate this, the presentation layer in JavaScript. We just wrote a simple integration module for this JavaScript library. And after that, we had to write a, a formatter for the custom brands of this uh, oil company too. Okay, uh, what other tools we used by uh, building this site for version tracking, feature management, testing. Of course, uh, we used uh, uh, GIT for, for the version tracking, features module uh, for exporting every, uh, every settings and views and, and features uh, from the database and uh, to make it manageable uh, with, uh, with uh, version tracking and so on. We created features in four topics, the multi-language, the root planner, the theme, and a user management extension too, because the client had a special requirements about the users. They got uh, special uh, customers. We had to import them. Uh, we used rules for this, and uh, the rules were exportable with features too. Okay. Uh, with, uh, for testing, we, on the website, we use the Selenium ID. That's a, this is a, a very simple uh, Firefox plugin. Uh, you can record uh, sessions with it and define control points, uh, conditions, uh, which when are true, the test is uh, passed. Okay, so this was about the website and uh, Let's talk a little bit about the mobile applications. As I said, this is uh, an ongoing development. You can see the versions of the splash screen here. Uh, it's in progress. We have to build iOS and Android uh, applications. And if you, uh, uh, if you haven't tried it yet, maybe you are a little bit scared about mobile application development. But uh, I said that don't panic. Uh, PhoneGap is a great tool for uh, people coming from the web uh, to start to create uh, mobile applications. And, uh, and it, it's really just like uh, building a mobile website, but you get uh, much more features. You can access the, uh, the device. Uh, the, the special hardware capabilities of the device too. So, okay, it's like building HTML5 and JavaScript application, but uh, of course, uh, we, the backend is different. You can't run MySQL and PHP on your mobile phone, uh, but you can integrate with Drupal through uh, web services or uh, any other kind of thing. And you can uh, also use uh, storage uh, object, HTML5 local storage, and so on, which is uh, really uh, widely adopted. And the HTML5 local storage works on every platform well. Uh, and additionally, you can even debug your code, because debugging uh, the mobile applications is, is, can be difficult. But the base logic of your application, you can even debug in your favorite browser. Uh, if you use a phone gap shim, that HTML5 application will just start in Firefox or Chrome and so on. Uh, also, on, uh, when you're developing iOS application, uh, there is a simple way to connect the Safari's uh, web development tools to uh, uh, a running uh, application which runs on an iPhone simulator. 
and you can see the console and everything. So it is a really familiar way to uh, web development. Also, it's easy to start with it. <coughs> I, uh, there is a cloud-based solution too. It's f called PhoneGap Build. Uh, it is a great way to start, but uh, if you don't have uh, the best bandwidth or, or just are build, building custom applications, there are some limitations of the PhoneGap Build environment. Uh, I recommend to uh, install it locally because it's faster and it, it hasn't got any limitations. You can uh, uh, use custom Fonga plugins, even write custom Fonga plugins. And, and uh, as you see here, in six lines, if you are lucky, <laughs> you will get a, a Hello World application for iOS and, uh, and, and Android after you built and installed everything what's needed. So the start is easy, but uh, reserve two days for it. Because, uh, for example, on iOS, you have to install set up Xcode, register on different pro development portals, uh, pay for provisioning profile. And after that, you will be able to run your own development application on your own device. This is how the iOS development works. And the Android is a little bit simpler, but uh, because of the many, many, many uh, kinds kind of uh, Android phones and tablets, that is a lot more to do with uh, testing. So after you install the SDK, you have to set up uh, virtual devices, of course, you have to configure the test DK, download uh, extensions to it. And after that, you have to you can you can start the actual development. And of course, uh, you will have to read those manuals, and and googling to finally get a working development environment. Okay. Let's see a concrete feature. How we sold this uh, loading the root the interconnection with the website. So once you uh, planned the route on the website, at the uh, first station, you can save it. Uh, for every route, we generate a unique ID. This is a small ID, uh, uh, almost human readable, small, short uh, ID. And uh, we decided to make this as simple as possible, so we did not implement uh, a login or something like that. You can, this is uh, not really a sensitive information, a, a root plan. So you can just uh, uh, put in your root ID, and uh, after that, a simple AJAX request, uh, HTTP GET request uh, is transmitted to Drupal. We don't even use the services model or any uh, kind of uh, wrapper mechanism for this. This is a simple menu hook, simple menu hook, which returns the root. Uh, here I w wrote JSON, but uh, it's now XML, it's a GPX uh, format, what's returned and parsed by uh, JavaScript, because the GPX is a interchangeable uh, format for other uh, navigation devices too, so the website provides uh, GPXs. Okay. So about offline features. The fuel station database uh, uh, is stored in local storage because it's need to, it needs to be updatable. The initial data uh, is in a big JSON file, and if the local storage doesn't exist, at the application uh, will build it from the JSON file at startup. Um, the current state of the offline mapping uh, research and development task is that uh, uh, we are we are uh, experimenting this uh, Clyde made and Mapbox and Leaflet, 
uh, things, but we think that in the uh, first milestone, this uh, won't be implemented, maybe in a later step. But to have uh, some offline features, the nearest fuel station uh, feature will work uh, offline too, just uh, textually. So when you don't have an internet connection, you will get a list of the nearest uh, fuel stations from the local uh, fuel station database. And uh, if you have uh, internet connection, you can switch to uh, map uh, mode. Okay, so the current project state, I think this is a success because we, the website is already done. It's, it's a release candidate level. It's under acceptance at the client. Uh, and the mobile app development is going according to plan. Okay, this is my uh, session. Uh, you can find us on the web at brainsum.com or at Drupal.org as a service provider. So thank you and uh, uh, feel free to ask me some questions or send me questions in email. And please uh, don't forget to take the survey link at the Drupal.com website. So. Uh, thank you. Any questions? Uh, the, the question was which version uh, what we used. Uh, it was the 3.0.0. I think it is the latest. Uh, uh, could you please use the microphone there because the AV team. Sorry, uh, two questions if you don't mind. Uh, first, the custom modules that you build, like fish tamper GPS and uh, open layers directions, will they be? Are there any plans to contribute them back to Drupal.org? Uh, yes, we are planning this because, but now those modules are. Uh, very, very customized for the client's needs. So we have to clean up the whole code and, and separate the, uh, the reusable parts uh, from the custom parts. But yes, uh, we, we plan this and, and so, and of course they are uh, GPL uh, licensed now too. So if you want to look at them, I can send the modules to you. And the second question is, uh, I know PhoneGap evolved quite fastly in the last year, but Apple is notorious for approval of PhoneGap apps and HTML apps uh, in general. Have you had problems with getting your app approved? Uh, no, this is not uh, our first PhoneGap project, and, uh, and uh, we hadn't got uh, this kind of problems. And uh, I read about a lot, uh, this, about this topic a lot, and. The problem is not really with uh, HTML-based applications or with phone gap applications from the Apple side. Uh, the problem is that Apple has really strict guidelines uh, that how a mobile application should look like and work to if you just simply convert a simple website with phone gap, uh, they will reject it. But if you uh, create uh, a a mobile application like a user experience with buttons and so on, that, that this, is, this won't be a problem. There are a lot of phone gap in, uh, built applications on the Apple App Store. Thank you. Okay, any more questions? Um, well, uh, thank you.